From the sidelines of NFL games to the brightly lit studios of the Fox News Channel, Emily Campagno's rise to TV stardom was totally unexpected. Although Emily Campagno's wide-ranging career makes it seem as though the multi-talent has simply plucked each new job out of a hat, there apparently is a method to her madness. Indeed, in a 2021 interview with The Wrap, the Californian argued that all the industry hopping has been entirely organic. Shortly after being confirmed as the new co-host of Fox News' Outnumbered, Campagno insisted, "...the common denominator in my background is I was always pursuing a passion mixed with an opportunity." The political science graduate went on to use her unlikely foray into cheerleading for the Oakland Raiders as an example. Campagno told The Wrap, "...part of why I was able to flourish there was because I, at the time, was practicing criminal defense with this amazing firm. They were former professional athletes and coaches themselves, and they represented a lot of professional athletes in many high-profile cases." Campagno was subsequently made an NFL ambassador, which led to various TV appearances. As a result, she made various media connections, which ultimately led to a job as a legal analyst on America's premier conservative news network. In 2022, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez gave a controversial interview to GQ in which she argued, "...my experience here has given me a front-row seat to how deeply and unconsciously, as well as consciously, so many people in this country hate women." As you would expect, many regulars of the deeply patriotic Fox News were quick to respond on Twitter, including Sean Hannity and Senator Marsha Blackburn. But Emily Campagno decided to air her grievances toward the Congresswoman live on national television. The star appeared to take particular umbrage with Ocasio-Cortez's millennial status, telling outnumbered viewers, "...this is a 32-year-old who's arguing with us and lecturing us." She said in that article that America would never allow a female to be elected. She said, "...because they hate women." And I just think that it reeks of her naivete. Campagna went on to argue that her new nemesis should instead have been honoring the achievements of women like Maya Flores and Winsome Sears, who are, of course, at the opposite end of the political spectrum, instead of tarring the entire country with the same brush. And you would think she would be generous and humble enough to celebrate everyone's elevated position rather than just complain about the lack of yeah, her future one. Emily Campagno did the seemingly impossible in December 2021 with her reaction to the firing of more than 900 employees of a digital mortgage lender. She rendered her Fox News colleagues speechless. The outnumbered co-host caused controversy when she celebrated the news that Better.com CEO Vishal Garg had let go of 15 percent of his Indian and American workforce over Zoom. Lisa Kennedy Montgomery described this impersonal approach as classless and argued, "...Garg is probably a horrible person to work for." Her colleague almost reverted to her former cheerleader mode. Yes, Campagno could barely contain her glee, admitting, "...I loved this," before claiming that the redundancies were entirely deserved. The Californian said, "...the productivity of those 900 individuals averaged two hours a day, even though they were paid for eight." I love that for 900 people, he stayed safe and he let them know that their theft was no longer tolerated. So for me, good riddance." Campagno then twisted the knife in further, describing those laid off as snowflakes who lacked any sense of work ethic. She also shared her support for the firing with her gutfelt pals. Understandably, the University of Washington graduate faced a backlash for her lack of empathy. You already know that Emily Campagno was once a cheerleader for the Oakland Raiders, while balancing a career as a criminal defense attorney. But the outnumbered co-host's dancing background started long before she was shaking pom-poms in the NFL. In fact, Campagna was just three years old when she took up ballet, as she explained in Rachel Campus Duffy and Sean Duffy's Fox News book, All American Christmas. "...as a dancer in The Nutcracker, each year I performed abbreviated versions of the production in schools and elderly care facilities throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. I loved performing for seniors and for children." Dropping every girlfriend like a hot potato the moment they turned 25 wasn't the only accusation leveled at Leonardo DiCaprio in 2022. The serial monogamist was also labeled a hypocrite for traveling on an environmentally unfriendly superyacht while pleading with the general public to watch their carbon footprint. And Emily Campagno was one of his loudest detractors. While discussing a photo of the actor lounging around on the $150 million yacht near St. Bart's in the Caribbean on her Fox News show Outnumbered, Campagno filled viewers in on his luxury vehicle. It's said to produce as much carbon Carbon sailing just seven miles as an average car does in a year." The former cheerleader then turned to ex-GOP congressman Jason Chaffetz, where she continued to call out DiCaprio's mixed messages. Campagno said, "...people are absolutely on board with learning how they can help save our planet and do good in this world. But if it's coming from a performative message or falsity, then all it does is take everyone back two steps." To the surprise of literally no one, Fox News' ultra-conservative regular, Emily Campagno, isn't exactly the biggest fan of President Joe Biden. She had some choice words about the 46th during a typically outspoken segment on Outnumbered. 
The topic of conversation on this occasion was Biden's suitability for a second term as POTUS, given that he would be 86 years old when it came to an end. And Campagno certainly didn't hold back when it came to her thoughts on the matter. The argument that, well, if the policies were awesome, we would forgive them, we wouldn't mind the stumbles and the gaffes and the crypt keeper in front of us, right? But the point is that the policies are absolutely terrible, and Americans are hurting. She rattled off a statistic about Americans' beliefs on term limits and emphasized her position that Biden wasn't mentally or physically up to the job, adding, "...and the fact that he is so feeble is just sort of the emperor's new clothes situation, where you can't deny it anymore." Like many of her Fox News colleagues, Emily Campagno seems unlikely to ever join a Black Lives Matter protest march. In fact, during a segment on Outnumbered in 2022, the Californian called the movement's tax affairs into question, claiming that it's only a matter of time before its figureheads are investigated by the IRS. Campagno made the controversial remarks following reports that donations from members of the public had allegedly been passed on to family members of Patrice Cullors, the co-founder of the nonprofit organization. Campagno argued, "...this is the tip of the iceberg because this is them complying. It's basically an audit to maintain their nonprofit status. This hasn't even touched actually the IRS civil or criminal division. But based on what we know thus far, I wouldn't hold my breath that there wouldn't be one of those investigations because I think one's coming." And that wasn't the only criticism that Campagno leveled at BLM during the heated debate. She also accused them of ignoring certain damaging statistics, adding, "...just from this year alone, up to eight out of every ten homicide victims in the city of Chicago are young African-American men, and we have heard nothing from that national organization." Not content with making enemies out of political figures such as Joe Biden, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and Nancy Pelosi, Emily Campagno switched the focus of her wrath to Hollywood in February 2022, and the sister act star Whoopi Goldberg was her number one target. The outnumbered host was discussing the provocative claim Goldberg made on The View when she said, "...the Holocaust isn't about race." Goldberg later issued an apology for the remarks. However, Campagna was upset by the lenient response from the other side of the political field over Goldberg's remarks, telling her audience, "...I just wonder, you know, where are the calls for the boycott and the cancellation from the left? Because they seem to be absolutely on fire when Gina Carano put out posts equivocating Holocaust remarks where she was fired from Disney. We've yet, I think, to see a statement from ABC, however, on this." Campagno, who also referred to the backlashes that Roseanne Barr and Kirstie Alley have both faced, went on to add, "...I do not see that same level of total offensiveness and outrage and uproar from the left because Whoopi is one of their own." There doesn't seem to be a political figure on the Democratic side of the spectrum that Emily Campagno hasn't torn into. But while Joe Biden is perhaps her most regular punching bag, the Californian has saved her most vitriolic response for Beto O'Rourke. While appearing on Outnumbered in 2022, talk turned to the one-time presidential nominee and his interruption of the press conference Texas Governor Greg Abbott staged in the wake of the Uvalde school shootings. And Campagno certainly didn't hold back, saying of O'Rourke, "...he's a performative clown. He's reprehensible. He's a joke. I don't want to give him any more airtime. He's not worth it. He's a waste of flesh." The politician had confronted Abbott to criticize his lack of action on gun control, but Campagno believes that O'Rourke was wrong for calling for action and daring to suggest that prayers and thoughts are no longer enough. She claimed, "...the mayor of Uvalde also said it best. He said, "...you're out of line. Leave the auditorium. That's unfortunately exactly what we get by that despicable person." It takes nerves of steel to tell the highly opinionated Emily Campagno no, but that's exactly what the U.S. Air Force did, and repeatedly so, before she became America's number one attorney cheerleader news personality. Yes, back in the day, Campagno harbored ambitions of becoming a fighter pilot. Unfortunately for her, she was denied the opportunity due to something she had no control over. Writing for Fox News about her family's military history, Campagno explained, "...I went to space camp and aviation challenge, the Air Force Academy's summer scientific seminar, and secured any related internship I could find, and was told again and again I was too small to be a fighter pilot." Undeterred, the former Oakland Raiderette enrolled in the Air Force's ROTC program while studying at the University of Washington. But after two years, she was once again told that her height was too much of a barrier. Campagno also recalled how her interest in the military was sparked, writing, "...my dad was a commander in the U.S. Navy, with three daughters. Before I could go out with friends, I had to get my room ready for inspection, and a good chunk of our family bonding time besides the kids' activities were definitely all the chores we did, which I loved." Emily Campagno might not have seen any military action as a member of the U.S. Air Force, but she did get to spend a fortnight in Baghdad entertaining the troops. During her cheerleading days, the Californian and four other NFL cheerleaders headed to Iraq, where she gained a deeper understanding of what it is like to fight for your country. In a piece on her family history for Fox News, Campagno recalled, "...it blew me away how isolated these soldiers were and how young they were, and I was humbled and impacted by the reasons they shared for their signing up, which included family hardship and desperation." The political science graduate, 
Elliot believes that her routines help such men with their homesickness, writing, The primary reason for our being there was to boost morale and show them how America cared, to give these brave soldiers a bit of home, a bit of normalcy, in their chaotic world.